Mr. Marconi, class has started. Oh, great. Thank you, Christina. Uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone, and a uh, happy and uh, healthy uh, Thursday to you, wherever you may be. Uh, today, what we're going to do is, as you can see from the agenda on the screen before you, what we're going to do is uh, the P7 study group. Now, we've something new, obviously. We've set it up this week. But uh, what I want to do is host for you, if you will, the study group. And uh, then I want to record it and uh, see if uh, we can't share that with others so that um, you know, they can see what we're doing and we can learn from it, all right? Uh, as far as the other two agenda items on there, I've already talked about that. Please be able to complete both those surveys uh, by the time we meet tomorrow. So here we go. Um, here are, on the left-hand side of your screen, here are the AP Daily videos that have been produced for period seven. And the way I want to start off here is um, by asking just a number of questions, uh, seeing if we can turn this into a really good learning experience. I'm going to start here with a Carling and with Carolyn, or Carling in particular. So Carling, um, question for you, uh, innovations in communication. What 1920s, what do you, and what did you learn from the AP Daily video? What have you learned from the class, slideshow, lecture, so on? What, what are, is one of the really big, if you will, um, innovations in communication in the 1920s? Um, one of the very important innovations were a radio. It increased communication and more stories and news were spread out to the public. Good. Everybody in the chat box right now, nicely done. Everybody in the chat box right now, other than radio, what was one other major innovation in terms of communication in, uh, in the 1920s, aside from the radio? And Carling, uh, while they're doing that, um, do you happen to have any kind of, of um, key concept there for us? Were you able to locate one that, that gets to the heart of this by any chance? Um, I said new forms of mass media, such as radio and cinema, contributed to the spread of national culture, as well as greater awareness of regional cultures. Good. So you've got two there. I'm looking at the chat box, Carling, and I'm seeing somebody say the Zimmerman telegram. Do you think that's an example of a innovation in communication in the 1920s? Would you agree with that uh, comment? Um, and you I, can always pass. You know that if you say, I don't know, I'll just pass. Um, can I pass? Of course you can. We, everybody can pass. Carolyn, um, can you come on there as one of the other study group members for this particular uh, AP Daily video? If someone said Zimmerman Telegram, do you think that would be a, a correct answer for uh, innovation and communication? No. And, and why not? What would be your reasoning for that not being an innovation in communication? I think it was before 1920. It was before. In fact, Zimmerman Telegram played a role in what major American historical event? World War One. World War One, and that's before, and that's before. And I'm seeing a number of you put that into the chat box. Uh, in the chat box, I'm also seeing a couple of students, and when I, uh, the rest of you who are in the room right now, um, whenever I ask a question, I don't want anybody sitting on the sidelines today. You either place an answer to my question in the chat box or you place a, que a question mark. And then I'm gonna analyze the chat box. Uh, I'm gonna save the chat box and analyze it later on for participation today. But um, I, Carolyn, I'm also seeing someone say the telegram. Uh, the telegram was a 1920s uh, innovation in communication. What do you think about that, ans that answer? Um, I think the telegram was also earlier. Was also earlier. Um, everybody in the chat box, and I'm going to ask Carolyn and Carling this question in a second. There are about what we said, 12, 13, all important dates that you need to, to learn uh, for this class. One of those dates is 1844. Everybody in the chat box, without looking it up quickly, right now, three, two, one, quickly. What is 1844? Uh, wh why do we need to know that date? What's significant about that date? And I'm seeing already one person give me a correct answer, a second person give me a correct answer, a third person, Tiffany, Jaden, nicely done, uh, Caitlin. I, I, um, I'm seeing a number of correct answers. 
Car Carling, I'm seeing the election of Polk. Carolyn, I'm seeing the election of Polk. When you, Carling, Carolyn, when, and, and, and that is a correct answer. When we say Polk, what is significant about Polk? What is significant about that election? Carol Carling, do you have anything for me there? Other than Polk one, do, do you have anything? And again, anybody just feel free to pass. I'm gonna ask dozens and dozens of questions and then we'll just move on and just keep moving on until someone gets this one. Do you have one there for me, Carling? Is it manifest destiny? Is it manifest destiny? Let's ask Carolyn. Carolyn, Polk, is it manifest destiny? Is that what's important about, uh, uh, about Polk, manifest destiny? Um, I also thought manifest destiny, but I think it, he also has something to do with like the anti-slavery versus- Okay, slavery. good. Uh, I'm seeing a number of people in the chat box, in fact, say manifest destiny. He's, his name of all the presidents there is closely associated with manifest destiny. Let's do something now in the chat box, everybody. I want you to think about that image and I'm gonna bring it back to a comment made here in just a moment. You'll see how it all connects. Um, I, I, the manifest destiny image that we have. In the chat box, what do you remember manifest destiny holding on to? Carolyn Carling, don't look it up. I'm going to ask you in just a second. Don't bother putting your answer in the chat box. But the rest of you guys in the room today, what do you remember manifest destiny, that image that we look at? What do you remember her holding on to? And don't look it up. If you don't know, just put a question mark. And so I'm getting, I'm getting a book. I'm getting a question mark. I'm getting the constitution. I'm getting a book, a couple more question marks. And then I'm getting she's holding a book. Carling, Carolyn, she in fact is holding a book. Do either of you remember? And I believe, who was it here? Uh, Felix did a nice job of answering this question correctly and so did Amber. Do you, um, do you remember her holding anything else by any chance? So now I'm assuming the silence means probably not. I think it was like, she was like stringing on like a line from the telephone, like a pole, like a string of like a line. Well, now comes an interesting question. Was this a line, if you will, from a telephone or from a telegraph? I want you first of all, all to call up quickly on your own, the image, just do a quick Google search, manifest destiny. I want you to actually see her holding that. And then I want you to ask your, then I want you to uh, ask yourself the question, is she is this a telephone line, you think, or a telegraph line that she's holding? What is she moving westward? Everybody in the chat box, give me uh, your quick guess and while you're doing that, Carling, what do you think it is? Telegraph or telephone? Telegraph. Telegraph. What do you think, Carolyn? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Number of students right now in the chat box are placing telegraph. Everybody look up the uh, right now Google search. When was the telegraph invented? And my guess is you don't even need to look it up. If you tell yourself this manifest destiny image, she's holding a telegraph line and you know that Polk was elected in 1844 and his name is most closely associated with this very image that you're looking at, you know the answer, but let's find it factually now. When was the telegraph invented? Into the chat box, everybody. Um, and I've got 1844, I got 1830, anybody else? I got 1830, keep going. Before 1844, 1830, 1840. There you go. That's exactly what we're gonna find. Somewhere around 1830s, 1840s, we've got the invention of this thing. And we don't need the exact date. So now I think we have pretty much and, and conclusively pr proven it was the telegraph that was invented long before the 1920s. And now let's look up when was the telephone invented. Let's take a look at that. Do you know Carling by any chance roughly? Uh, not sure. Not sure. Car Carolyn, do you know by any chance? Late 1800s. What are you guys finding in your chat box? I don't see any responses here. And I'm finding 1870s, 1876. I'm finding mid to late 1800s. And so back to you, uh, uh, Carolyn and, and Carling. 
in that AP Daily video, uh, did the did the teacher who made that video did he mention the telephone in that video? Do you do you know? Uh, did you maybe not look at it closely enough? Do you want to pass? Can you do, you do you do you know if he mentioned the telephone in that video? No. Uh, well, well, Carolyn, that was a he did not right. Mm -hmm. And Carlene, do you recall by any chance? Like. I'm not sure. I don't. I'm not sure is a good answer. So there we go. So so look, clearly what we've got here is definitely, definitely where we're all going to agree is the radio. You did a nice job of that, Carling. And then you said one other thing: cinema. What is cinema, Carling? Like where people watch shows. Does does cinema just include the concept of movie theaters? or does it actually include the concept of movie making? In other words, what I'm asking is, if I went and took a course in the history of movie making, would it more or less start with the 1920s or a period much earlier than that? What do you, what do you think? Earlier? Earlier, what do you think, Carolyn? Earlier. Uh, why don't we just all look at look it up, you know? History of, of, of movie making, because uh, cinema is, even if it's earlier, cinema, what is cinema? It, it doesn't just mean movie theaters. It also includes movie making. And what you've told me and told me here correctly, both, both of you girls, is that the 1920s, one of the great innovations was in movie making. Christian Lau, you're saying before 1920, what are you finding there? Um, I'm finding like, they're kind of, <laughs> It's like not really certain. I see like 1876 to 1877. So why do you think, why, why is cinema, Carling's correct, cinema was me mentioned. What do you think really happened in the 1920s when we're talking cinema? If it, if, if it wasn't invented, what do you think really started happening a lot in the 1920s in terms of cinema? In terms of cinema, um, maybe like, uh, like uh, black and white images moving, I guess, that animation kind of. How about that? Animation, maybe moving film or so on, maybe number of people going to the theater, but we're going to see quite an expansion there. Um, let, let's go over to the side of technology. Carolyn, when we talk about techno uh, innovations in technology, what are we talking about in the 1920s? The automobile. Good. And, uh, and, and any, can you give me anything specific? Can you mention any uh, concrete bit of historical evidence? I mean, are we talking the Ford Chevy truck? I mean, what are we talking about? I guess they just messed that up pretty bad, but you understand what I'm saying. Um, specifically Ford. Um, uh, I think mm -hmm. Go ahead. the innovation of the automobile over time affected like America economically, socially, and geographically. Yes. And cars no longer were a luxury, but started to propel more towards becoming a necessity. Very nicely explained. And Carling, other than the, the, the uh, car, the Model T, uh, any other innovations in technology in the 1920 that this, this, the students need to know about or that was revealed by way of one of the AP Daily videos on this topic? Um. It was not in the AP video, but on the slides. Yeah, what was on there? Um, vacuum cleaners, washing. Vacuum machine. cleaner, what else? Washing machine. Washing machine, refrigerator, and so on. Um, did the, did the, you said the, the AP Daily video did not include that. Was the AP Daily video only really when it says tech, technological innovations, was it only on the automobile? No, uh, it also included things that were electrified. So like, like anything at home. Like what? There you go. Um, I think specifically like the things that Carling already named, but I guess something they pointed out was that women or people who were doing things at home, it kind of made life a lot easier for them where they could do more in a shorter amount of time because things were no longer something that you had to do, like, I guess, solely by hand, but you also had a machine or something to assist you with it. Very nice, very nicely done. Let's move on to uh, the next one, 1920s cultural and political controversies. Over to you, Jaden. Um, 
the word political is not the same as the word cultural. They mean two different things. Everybody in the chat box, while Jaden thinks about this for a second, when, when you hear the word political, what words should immediately come to mind? What other words to help you understand? Like, for example, when we say a political controversy, what's another way of saying it? Carolyn gives me the word government. Very good. You should think of the word government. What other words should you be thinking of? Everybody in the chat box. Okay. Uh, no, not necessarily. Well, I suppose, Brian, left versus right, I suppose. Uh, de debates is a little vague. Um, we'll, we'll get to some of the others. Good. Keep going. Um, Car uh, Carolyn, what words would you use other than government? And many of them are popping up here in the chat box right now. What other words would you use? Government. You there, Carolyn? I guess inner country relationships. Inner country relationships, fine. Uh, would you use the word, how about the word laws? Uh, I, I, um, let me see who, who put that here. Um, Brendan Gill put the word laws. You think that's a good word when you think of political or politics? I think it's a part of politics, yes. How about rules? Laws, rules, government, good words there? I think laws more than rules. Okay. Uh, Carling, um, how about the word amendment? How about that word? Is that a good word to think of when you're thinking of politics or political controversies? Yeah. So I want to ask you a question. Uh, sorry, I asked Carling, but I meant Jaden. Jaden, political controversies. Was there any, let's use the word amendment for an amendment for, for a second. Were there any controversies over amendments in the 1920s? Um, I believe the 19th Amendment was probably one of the controversies during this time. Basically, um, women were uh, debating over their roles in society. They were uh, they were becoming a little bit more rebellious in their ways. They cut their hair shorts, they smoked, they danced to jazz music, and they even found more independence within themselves, such as like with the automobile. There was also a lot of controversial topics regarding uh, laws for them, such as the reproductive rights, divorce laws, parental rights, property rights, and so many more. Now, and now I'm gonna go back to my original question. If, if the word political, because you really went over both political and cultural there. If the word political brings up thoughts of rules, laws, policy, government, amendments, if it brings up words like that, can you use any one of those words to describe a controversy during the 1920s? Can you say like, look, there was a political controversy over a specific amendment. Which amendment did, would you say it was? And you might've said it, I might've missed it, but I, I, I wanna just double check on this. The 19th amendment. And what was the 19th amendment? Um, I, I, I'm gonna pass. <laughs> okay, that's what I'm getting at. And Brendan Gill, what was the 19th amendment? Uh, I believe that was, uh... I, I believe that was passed uh, to allow women to vote. And so the controversy was over the rule. The rule was, should women be allowed to vote? So the co controversy was, other side, no, they should not be allowed to vote. There's your controversy. Um, good. So we had, we had a political controversy over the 19th Amendment, over the question of what should the rule be as it relates to women voting. Jane, Brendan, any other rule controversies during this period of time? where you say either an amendment or a rule was passed and not everybody, not everybody agreed about this rule or amendment. Uh, one of the rules, it wasn't actually an amendment, but it was more of a state rule in the, the state of Tennessee. And uh, the entire trial that I'm referring to is the Scopes uh, monkey trial. And uh, that was a controversy uh, regarding uh, Charles Darwin's theory of evolution. As a, a teacher, I believe his name was uh, John Scopes, uh, decided to teach his students uh, about Darwin's theory of evolution although it was prohibited by the state of Tennessee and that uh, he was brought to court. Uh, but over, uh, but uh, in the end, uh, it was found that uh, it was, it was more of a battle over uh, modernism and uh, fundamentalism. And uh, overall the, the trial kind of proved that modernism triumphed and is triumphing uh, fundamentalism during the twenties. Very nice. Everybody in the chat box right now, but, uh, Brendan, Jane, I'm going to come back to you guys one more time, see if we can go any further with this. So we have two major 1920 controversies 
rule controversies. One over an amendment, one over a rule in Tennessee. Can anybody think of another controversy over a rule where we went, oh my gosh, this is going to be the rule. Yes, I agree. No, I don't. Anybody have one there for me? And uh, I want those in the chat box. If you can't, just put a question mark. But I want a response right now. And while they're plugging those in, uh, Jaden, do you have another one? And I'm, I'm, guys, I need a, an answer or, a, or, oh, here we go. There we go. Or a question mark. So Carly, Carly, I love what you've got there. Good. Uh, any, any controversy? Um, I'm going to look at these here in just a Quite a few question marks. Jaden, do you have another one for us? Uh, I'm going to pass at this time. How about you, Brendan? Uh, yeah, um, I guess the, uh, I think it's called the National Origins Act. Oh, let's talk about that one. So a, a, a National Origins Act, what's that? Uh, well, it was basically kind of off of the uh, Emergency uh, Quota Act. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, first I'll talk about that one. So that kind of uh, limited immigration to 3% of the entire population. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the National Origin Act uh, further restricted the immigration, uh, basically not allowing uh, immigrants to come to the U.S. as many of the people in the U.S. were worried that they were going to you know, they viewed that they would negatively influence their, uh, you know, their society and I guess their culture too. Very nice. Very nice. You've got three. Do you want to see if you can go for four? Have you got one more? Uh, I, I'm going to have to pass on that. I can't think of any more. Hey, you've done well. Carly Yen, you want to come up and see if you got, give me the one you just put into the chat box. What's the other major uh, controversy on a rule there? Oh, I said the 18th Amendment, which is where they banned alcohol. Well, 18th Amendment, I'd be very careful with the phrase banned alcohol. They banned four things, four things, just to be a little bit more precise. Um, when you say banning alcohol, did they ban the drinking of alcohol? Oh, no, I think it was, uh, to be more specific, it was like the manufacturing or like sale of it. The selling of it, the manufacturing of it. If you have two of the four, you'll be fine. Guys, what else could it include? If you're not going to ban the manufacturing and the selling, uh, Amber's got the two, then what else could you be banning? And there we go. The distribution, the importing. These are the kind of things that you're going to be banning as well. Good, nicely done. Um, boy, we, we've covered a lot of ground there in terms of the political controversies. Um, into the chat box, everybody, when you hear the word cultural, if I said to you, hey, uh, de describe your culture for me, what words should immediately come to mind? Because I'm going to ask you about the cultural controversies. So Carolyn's given me traditions. That's a really good word. Uh, you, I, I'm gonna, if I ask you about your, um, your language, your religion, I'm seeing that expressed. Those are good words. Your background. Jaden, give me a few more. Do you, do you have some background, traditions, your culture, your language? What are some other words that we might use? Do you, uh, do you have any? Like entertainment, such as the arts? Maybe the entertainment, your arts. Do you have any others for me? Would beliefs be cultural or political? Cultural. How about your traditions? Cultural. How about uh, your practices? Cultural. So now tell me about some controversy in the 1920s that had to do with say beliefs, traditions, practices, some cultural controversy. What's one of the big ones in the 1920s? Well, during the 1920s, the KKK started to reemerge in Stone Mountain, which is in Atlanta. And they basically discriminated and against anyone who was not white, Anglo-Saxon, and Protestant. So that majority of those who were discriminated included African-Americans and new immigrants that came over to America. So, so what's the controversy? People who believe this versus people who believe, believe that. In similar, what's the belief controversy? Basically... It, one side is you have to be Protestant and the other side is anything else, basically. Uh, okay, I, I could see, I, I'm surprised you went there, but I could, you know, um, I, I suppose that, that there could be a, a valid point made there. Brendan, do you see the, the, the cultural controversy in any other way than a religious controversy? Um, mm -hmm. I, I think it was also kind of a matter of uh, nativism as the the. I guess talking about like the KKK, those people kind of, uh, they figured that, you know, they, they didn't want 
the reason they discriminate against immigrants, especially new immigrants, is because they did not uh, feel they were like they they didn't like them coming into their culture and trying to, you know, influence their way of life into theirs. So, mm. yeah. Very very nice. A any other cultural controversy, Jaden, Brenda, that I, that we need to bring to everybody's attention here? Uh, Jessica, uh, can you come on and explain what you're thinking there? Is uh, what, it, what? That's a very interesting one. No one said that yet today. What's the, when you say the word jazz? What do you mean? What's the controversy? Um, I was thinking about the Harlem Renaissance. And what's the controversy? Yeah. Um, the controversy I think was about um spreading the art and like literature of the African American community. Very nice. Are you telling me that in the 1920s, in fact, in fact uh, Jess, let me ask you a question and you can pass. Do you like jazz? Uh, I, some jazz, yes. Some jazz, yes. Are you telling me that there are people in the 1920s that didn't like jazz? Probably, that's possible. Well, what do you think they thought about jazz? Why, what's there not to like about jazz other than it just doesn't work on my ear? In other words, how is this a cultural controversy? Can you can you explain that by any chance? Um, because jazz was related to um, black musicians. Very nice. Yeah, very good. Anybody else? We, we've got three or four cultural controversies now, and you usually only need two. All good. Any others in the 1920s? Did I hear us mention the, 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 the view of the role of women? Did we explore that a little bit? In the 20s, everybody thought the same about the role of women. Isn't, isn't that right, Jaden? Yes, uh, although during the 20s, women were starting to develop their own identities during this time, going against what society uh, envisioned them as, basically. Do you have any historical evidence to prove that claim of yours? Um, the, there was like a new era of women who were called flappers. And Explain that to me, what's a flapper? A flapper was uh, essentially a woman who uh, was a bit rebellious in their ways. Basically, they cut their hair short. They also smoked. They danced to jazz music. And uh, as I said before, they uh, found more independence within the automobile industry. And these were all kind of um, topics or practices that weren't really um, popularized before the 1920s. Very nice. Hey, um, let's try this. Uh, Amber, can you come on for a second? Yes. So contextualize all this for me. Your expertise here is the New Deal. Contextualize this. The, before the New Deal came the 1920s, and I imagine if I asked you about the 1920s, you'd say, well, there were innovations in communication and technology, and there were cultural and political controversies. What's another way to think of the period of time before the uh, before? Uh, the New Deal and the Great Depression? In other words, what's another way of thinking about the 1920s? It would be, I'm not sure if there's a term for this, but the opposite of a limited welfare state. Oh. So there would not be a monetary security net for poor families who suddenly um, went down on their luck and had no means um, to provide for themselves. Very nice, very nice. Hey, uh, before uh, the 1920s, are, are we going to consider this the first industrial revolution? Is that what's going on in America, or, or would this be the second industrial revolution? Uh, this would be the second industrial revolution. If we look at the period, say, uh, 1910 to 1930, that's the Gilded Age too, isn't it? Isn't isn't the 1920s that we're isn't that overlapping the Gilded Age there? Yes. Um, the 19, 1910, 1915 is the Gilded Age. Everybody in your in your Google, look up Gilded Age. When did it start? When did it end? Colin, help me out here. When did that end, Gilded Age? Um, the Gilded Age uh, ended at the period of time ending in like the, I'm not sure if there was a date for this other than 1900. Um, let, let, let's try it. Let's just look but, it up. I think you're about right. right there. So. Uh, uh, Julia, I like what you've got. Carly, I like what you've got. Uh, Colin, I like what you have. These are all good. So what are you finding online? It ends around the early 1900s. Um, so we're just, we're just contextualizing here a little bit, Amber. Um, 
And, and what else, what else, what other major historical events are occurring, say, from 1900 up until the, your topic uh, of the New Deal, not counting the Great Depression, Amber? Anything else of significance in that time period, 1900 to 1930? Um, around that time, laissez-faire was kind of in place um, since um, the Sherman Antitrust Act was in at that time was not that significant in terms of controlling monopolies. So at that time, um, monopolies in industries like the railroad, railroad and oil industries mm -hmm. were very strong. And there was a large wealth gap between the, the uh, rich businessman and the poor workers who didn't have like I said before, like a security net to, to make sure that they could support themselves. Let me ask you this question, progressive era, is that coming uh, before the New Deal or is that coming after your New Deal? I think the progressive era was um, before the New Deal. Everybody into the chat box, there are certain dates we need to know. One of them is the start of the progressive era. What year was that? Daniel, nicely done. Carly, nicely done. Brian, uh, no, uh, that's a uh, no. Jaden, nicely done. Christian, nicely done. Answer is 1890. Uh, uh, Cara, uh, let's see, Amber, Caitlin, are you there, Caitlin? And, and everybody else in the chat box, what starts the progressive era, 1890? What starts it? What, what, what significant events start? We have at least two we can draw from, we've learned in this class. What are the two major, if you will, uh, events that start that? Uh, no, Second Industrial Revolution does not start in 1890. Um, no, not the Gilded Age, not muckrakers, no. We said there were two major events that can be pointed to to, to start the, uh, the progressive era. Everybody look up Jacob Riss's Other Half Lives. When was that photograph? And while they're looking that up, Amber, you mentioned uh, about Standard Oil. We learned about a famous uh, Supreme Court case involving Standard Oil. My guess is you could find that by just looking up U.S. versus Standard Oil. When was that? And, and Carly, you've got it for us. So Carly, uh, there we go. Julia, you've got it too. 1890, progressive era um, is the, uh, the 1890s, the starting point of the progressive era. And it's at least marked by Jacob Riss's photograph, How the Other Half Lives. Amber, were you able to find the year of um, the, uh, the um, Standard Oil versus US? And while you're doing that, um, Caitlin, if you're there, the rest of you, could you look up please the year of, of um, Sherman Antitrust Act? I drew a blank there for a second. Sherman Antitrust Act. Not seeing anything in the chat box, not hearing from anybody. Oh, look at that. Sherman Antitrust Act was 1890. So Amber, just to back this out a little bit here for us, please. Um, you were, on the one hand, you were technically correct. And then on the other hand, I, I think you may have just gone a little bit too far. The, I was asking you really, in essence, to, to tell us what was leading up to the New Deal. Clearly the 1920s, and then clearly the Great Depression. Um, that, but, but when we're into the 1920s, uh, when we talk about the 1920s, we are really talking about the ending of the progressive era. So a number of the comments you made about laissez-faire and so on, those are really true, uh, if you will, leading in the period of history up to the progressive era. The, press, the progressive era, to some extent, marks... Uh, if not the end of laissez-faire, certainly an attempt to severely limit laissez-faire. So by really right around 1890, well, that was the Sherman Antitrust Act, but for a decade, it was a paper tiger. But by 1900, we're already finding uh, this whole concept of laissez-faire being significantly uh, a challenge. But I much like what you said about uh, not being a, a limited welfare state. Amber, um, in, in a sentence, what was the New Deal? 
It was an attempt to resolve problems made by the Great Depression. With, uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, Edward. Sorry. Yeah, with the, the three R's. With the three R's. Tell me about those three R's. So the three R's um, were basically aims of the New Deal, and that was relief for the unemployed and poor, recovery of the economy back to normal, and reform of the financial system. And those are from the slides. Very nice. Caitlin, are you there? Yeah. Hey, Caitlin, um, uh, relief for the poor. Explain that to me. What does that What does that mean? Relief for the poor in the New Deal. One of the R's was relief for the poor. Explain that to me. Well, it was a means of like, um, so examples. They granted, like, gave grants to local government. So that went to like soup kitchens and employed like younger people which paid their families so this was all directed towards like um helping out those that didn't have as much so that like they tr granted subsidies for farmers and um insured bank loans so all of these were um things that like means of giving relief to those that were not as financially stable as a result um, um, who's doing all of this? Churches, uh, rich members of the community? Who, who's giving all of this, what you're talking about? Um, I think it was the government power. It was like um, the new um, codes that they made. So the government. All right, good. And so now what I'm going to ask you is, can you name a specific uh if you will, code, law, policy, act. Can you name a specific one? Everybody in the chat box, uh, Tiffany or uh, uh, Amber included, can you name one in the chat box? I'm seeing Jess come up with one. Caitlin, have you got one for me? Um, would it be the Social Security Act? Well, all right, let's try it. I think uh, uh, you, t you, th you seem to think the Social Security Act was passed during the New Deal, and you're absolutely correct. What was the Social Security Act? And I'm not seeing a response from anybody else in the chat box. If you don't have an answer, just put a question mark, but I want everybody in today, okay? Um, it mandated workers um, pay into pension funds. And so once they retire, these workers would receive like payments from their social security fund that they paid um, corresponding to the amount that they paid like previously. Now, Caitlin, that was a really nice explanation. Um, was that read word for word or is that was that your own words? It doesn't matter. I'm just curious. Um, no, it was on our slides, but I like summed it up. That was nicely done. Very nice. Jaden just mentioned another thing. He mentioned something called the CC. C, Cons Civilian Conservation Corps, and Carly mentioned something called the WPA. Caitlin, do you know what either one of those were, WPA or CCC? Do you have either one of those? Yes, so the CCC uh, employed young men. It was one of the means of relief, and so by employing young men, um, it paid their families so it gave relief to the poor. What did these young men have to do? Thank you, Karen. I, I saw your note. You're leaving. I understand. What did these young men have to do when you say they were employed? Sing, dance, play soccer. What did they have to do to earn that money? Uh, they had to work. So like the New Deal, there were a lot of um, new opportunities for work in like... Um, building like new infrastructure? Well, okay, it's called Civilian Conservation Corps. So you're right, infrastructure, but infrastructure where? I'm gonna come back to you. You can look it up for a second. Amber, do you know what kind of, what we're talking about when we say conservation? Do you know where these guys are working? So they usually work more for a conservation of the environment and to improve them. So they would, perform projects to, um, I guess, develop like parks and other 
areas for the environment and they would get paid for that. Good. I want you all right now to either look out your window or uh, look through one of your walls. You don't have far to look. Look to what we call the San Gabriel Mountains. Look what you have in your backyard. Look how steep those are. Think about what's up there right now. Right now, there is snow up there. Whether you can see it or not, there's snow. In a matter of another month or so, that snow is going to start to melt. That water is going to rush like crazy out of those San Gabriels. And when it does, it goes where it wants to go. It tears up roads. It tears up little picnic areas. It tears up trails. Amber, during the Great Depression, who would go up there and fix those roads, bridges, trails, picnic areas? And the answer is? <laughs> People employed by the government through projects like the WPA and CCC? More likely through the CCC, conservation of our forests, conservation of our natural beauty. It would be the CCC. And how do we know that? Well, those San Gabriel Mountains, who owns those San Gabriel Mountains? Those San Gabriel Mountains are part of something called the National Forest. That's the National Forest. And so the CCC, uh, right here in our, in our area, they would go up into those. Now, you mentioned the WPA is also a New Deal uh, uh, venture. What was the WPA, Amber? So that was um, also a big part of the New Deal. And essentially, mostly, I think, younger men, they were hired to perform like manual labor to build infrastructure. Mm -hmm. I think the Golden Gate Bridge is or the, the ramp to the Golden Gate, Golden Gate Bridge rather, was uh, one of the, the more famous projects Good. during this period. Good, all of you look up uh, San Gabriel Valley uh, WPA building or construction. Look, at, look right here in our own backyard. What do you find? In fact, try Pasadena WPA, try San Marino WPA, San Gabriel Valley WPA. Do you see anything? Try Los Angeles WPA. Does anything stand out? And, and you say, oh my gosh, I didn't realize that it was built during the Great Depression. That was part of the New Deal. Nothing? Hmm. Um, actually, Huntington, this is Huntington Middle School. Huntington Middle School what? <laughs> um, well, when I click on it, it says they constructed a school building at the school for $15,000 in federal, federal funds. And $20,000 total and also improved the grounds on, in another project. Who did? I mean, they, uh, the WPA. The WPA. That's right. The WPA. And so when was all that work done on, on our middle school? When was that done, did you just say, Colin? Uh, during the early 1900s, I believe. Well, you said it WPA and WPA was the result of it's a part um, of the, the decisions made uh, during during this era, during, during the, era? Era. the progressive era, not the progressive era. No, no, not the, not the progressive Bacconi? era. Say it. Um, uh, Ms. Bacconi, sorry to interrupt, but class is ending. Class is ending. We're talking the Great Depression. All of this, guys, oh. Griffith Park Observatory, that dam between La Cunada and and and. Uh, Pasadena, uh, a number of different things in our own very backyard. All of it goes back to the 1930s. If it wasn't built then, it was reinforced then. If it wasn't reinforced then, it was added on to then. You go downtown to our train station, there's a WPA giant mural painting in there. All of that to get people jobs. Guys, we've run out of time. I wanted to get to Carly and Karen for mobilization. We went a long way. Um, this is a study group. I hope you found it valuable. I hope you now sit down with your uh, fellow classmates and go over some of these other topics just like this. Uh, the next time around, I'm gonna have you lead it and we'll see how far it goes. All of you have a great, uh, enjoyable, relaxing and uh, staying healthy afternoon and I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye everybody. Thank you, bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.